Right now, Dr. Pascal Jabour, the chief of neurovascular surgery for Jefferson Health at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, helping to lead a study into all of this. And, Doctor, I appreciate your time tonight. You've co authored a paper that details 12 specific cases where uh, COVID positive patients suffered strokes, and 40% of those patients were under the age of 50. Um, can you tell us detail as to what made these cases stand out to you and so unusual to you and your colleagues? Yes. Hi, Aaron. So uh, when the pandemic started, we noticed that there was a high uh, incidence of COVID in patients presenting with a stroke. And uh, we noticed also that there were a lot of young patients with no risk factors. So as you said, 40% of the patients were less than 50 years old. And overall, 50% of all the patients in the study did not have any risk factors for stroke. We also noticed that uh, the pattern of the clots uh, were different, and there were sometimes multiple vessels involved. And the clots were in, on both sides, uh, arterial and venous sides. So, so when you say that they didn't have underlying conditions leading towards strokes, when you look at the younger patients, right, because these are the very same people, right, that we're told um, have, have very minimal less, uh, risk for coronavirus, um, did any of them have underlying health conditions that may have been a factor aside from coronavirus? No, those young patients did not have any other risk factors, no risk factors for stroke. And 50% uh, of the patients uh, presented uh, didn't know that they had uh, the coronavirus. So stroke was uh, the first symptom of coronavirus in those patients. Wow. So, so what you're saying is that they may have, have felt, I mean, would, would you go so far as, as to say they were asymptomatic or did they have some sort of symptom where they ended up in uh, asymptomatic until the point they had something indicating a, a brain clot? Exactly. The majority of them, uh, they weren't symptomatic until they developed the stroke symptom. And what we noticed also that some of the patients are coming late. And this is really important because patients are scared of going to the hospitals. And uh, that's why we have a small window, a short window, to be able to uh, help those patients and to intervene. So uh, any patient uh, with any stroke symptoms, they need to call 911 right away or they need to present to the emergency room. And especially young patients that are confined at home with a diagnosis of, a diagnosis of COVID, uh, those patients specifically, if they have any stroke symptoms, they need to call 911. So, so, you know, we hear this and we hear, okay, now you're saying that, that someone could appear to be asymptomatic and their first symptom would be a sign of a stroke and a stroke itself, and this can happen in young patients. You know, this is, uh, as we're also finding out, uh, possible brain impacts from the, from the, the virus. Uh, obviously, we learned about smell and we learned about taste, nerve damage, kidney damage. I mean, does it just... Does it shock you that, that this virus could be causing such widespread damage within the human body? Yes, uh, I think there are a lot of things that uh, we don't know yet. And uh, at this point, uh, we need to keep our eyes open. And if we see any trends or anything unusual, we need to report it. We need to investigate it. So uh, we're going to see a lot of things, I think. What, what has happened to some of these patients in terms of their ability to recover from these strokes? So those patients, unfortunately, 50% mortality uh, in those patients with strokes. So in general, the mortality after a stroke intervention is around 10%. But in, in those patients, it was 50%. Uh, despite the fact that we were able to uh, retrieve the clot and open the, the vessel, uh, those patients ended up dying either from multiple organ failure or from the lung injuries they have. And some of them uh, ended up having strokes elsewhere. Hmm. So the outcome wasn't very good. All right, Dr. Jabor, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time. And I uh, hope for this will be something people can be aware of is just to make sure people are aware of every possible thing that could happen here so that they can do the best they can to get medical care as quickly as possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.